Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe After Effects tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodds and today we're going to take a look at creating this sort of particle logo or graphical reveal type effect here in Adobe After Effects. No plugins are needed to do it. If you have a copy of After Effects, you're set and ready to go. And speaking of being set and ready to go, let's jump into this and get started right now. Okay, here in Adobe After Effects, we'll begin by creating a new composition. You can name it whatever you like. I'm going with 3840 by 2160, the 4K UHD uh, size. I'm going with the background color of black and 10 seconds for my duration here. And I'm also doing 2997 as my frame per second. You could do anything you want. 60 FPS looks nice. I'm just going 2997 because why not? I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to go ahead first and grab our text tool. And I'm going to type the word particle or particles maybe, right into the middle of my document. Now, this isn't the middle of the document, but let's address the text itself. I'm using a font here called Kenyan Coffee and a size of 385 pixels, and I've stretched the tracking. I've spread the letters out at a, at a 225 clip. And down here, I also turned on all caps, which is going to obviously capitalize all the letters there in my bit of text. Now, my anchor point is over here. I don't know how much animating we're going to do to the text itself, but just on principle, I'm going to hold down command and option. That would be control and alt for the PC. And I'm going to double click this pan behind anchor tool up here. And that is going to shift my anchor point, as you can see, to the center of my text. Once I've got that, I'm going to go align and I'm going to make sure I'm aligning to my composition and align vertical and horizontal centers. There we have it. A beautiful piece of text in the middle of our composition. Okay, now we're going to right click down here in our layer area and choose new. And I'm going to choose new null object. And null objects are useful for all sorts of things here in After Effects. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I want to make sure I click on it. Make sure that it's actually selected in the layers area and click on the pen tool. This is going to allow us to draw a mask. Now, we're not necessarily interested in creating a mask, but rather a path that we're going to use for some special stuff in a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to begin up here and draw out a path maybe sort of like this and have it come up and over this way and then I'll have it shoot downward and then maybe right back up maybe I'll have it come up a little tighter something like that and then I'm gonna hold down alter option swing that a bezier handle around maybe something like that and we'll have it come back down this way basically the idea is going to be we want this to shoot up and down across the text you could also do a bit of like a circular spiraling pattern that might be kind of cool as well and you can really you know create whatever pattern you want maybe i'll have it go up a little bit higher here right there's no right or wrong way i'm holding down alter option again when i hit that bezier point just to or drag that tangent handle i'm sorry out of that bezier point just to uh, complete what i'm working on and then i'll make a little smaller point down here and then what we'll do is we'll head back out of out of this uh, setup just like this. And then I'm going to continue drawing the line just off over here just because the, the particle stream that we're creating is going to die somewhere out here where we can't see it anymore. All right, now that we've created this big path, I'm going to hit the letter M. And that's going to bring up my mask. And coincidentally, or consequently, I should say, not coincidentally, uh, consequently, it's going to bring up the mask path. I'm going to select the mask path and hit Command or Control C to copy it. Then I can just hit my delete button to delete that. All that hard work down the drain, but not really because here on our null one layer, I'm going to hit the letter P to open up my positioning. I'm going to select the word position and hit command or control V to paste this path back in place. And now what we have is there's our null object up there, a little placeholder. And you can see we've got all these keyframes in place. And what's happened is this animation has been created for us in After Effects. So we've just copied that path to the position and it's given us all these beautiful keyframes and we have now an animation that's going to squiggle over the top of our word particles okay next up we're going to right click again in the blank area of the layers area go new and we're going to choose to add a solid layer and i'm going to name this layer particles this is pretty standard here in terms of creating some particles uh, again with everything is just going to be the same as our composition here i said particles not particles and that's going to bother me so i'm going to correct that particles and then over here in my effect and presets panel I'm going to open that and I'm going to run a search for particle. And as I begin typing, it's going to load up. I'm looking for this one right here, CC Particle World. I'm going to drag it and drop it on my particles layer down here. And it's going to open up my effect controls panel over here. And here I have Particle World and all the parameters, stuff that I can change and adjust here uh, in my, or that have to do with my particles. 
And I want to twirl down grid and guides and just shut off the position radius, motion path, the grid, the horizon, and the axis box. And you can see I'm left with this. Let me just say, hey, you know what, fit this back into the screen. I don't know if you can see back there, but we got a very slight bit of particle action happening uh, that's difficult to see behind our text, but it's there. We're going to begin building it out right now. And we're going to do that here by going to physics. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to turn the velocity down to zero. We're probably going to adjust that later. And I'm going to turn gravity to zero as well. And then we'll twirl down particle, and I'm going to change the particle type from the line to the tetrahedron here, which is like a 3D looking triangle-y shape. It's a pyramid, I guess, is more like what it is. I'll come down here and set the birth size. I want it to be tiny, so I'm going to go 0 0.010. Very, very small indeed. And the death size, I'm going to leave that at 0 0.25. So birth and death, they're rather dramatic terms for basically how big it is when it first appears and how big it's going to get when it disappears. Now here for the size variation, I'm going to set that to 100% max variation and max opacity I'm actually going to reduce to 50% now I'm going to jump back up to the physics and I'm going to change the animation type to the viscous and I'm going to change the velocity to 0.5 so I knew we were probably going to come back and adjust that uh, a little bit later now I want to head up here and set the birth rate from 2 let's bump it up quite a bit to like 55 and the longevity in seconds we're going to take it from 1 second to 0.6 seconds and then I'm going to change the colors so I'm going to select the yellow which is the birth color or color that they're going to be when they first appear 0 0 D B C B. This is going to be a very light sort of bluish greenish color. And then for the death color, instead of being this red, we're going 5D00F1, 0, 0, which is this sort of, it's got to be purple. I'm going to hit OK. You can see there are the colors we're playing with. And I don't know if you can see it, but right down there in the middle, there's very subtle effects. And if I play through this, we're going to see we've got quite a bit going on there, right? All these particles being created. But the goal is going to be to take these or this, what is a big production of uh, multifaceted shapes and drag it along that animation that we created here in our null object. And we're going to do it using expressions because it's one of the ways that you can do it here in After Effects and expressions are cool. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come up here to producer and I want to link the X and Y position of my particles. And we're going to link them to the X and Y position of the null one animation because the XY position is that thing that's bobbing and weaving all over our uh, composition here. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to hold down our Alt key or our Option key, and I'm going to click on the stopwatch for position X. And what that's going to do is pop open this crazy looking mess down here in my layers panel, which is the expression uh, panel or expres expression writing area. And you can see here it's under producer, position X, and we, we can write an expression that is going to determine the X position of our particle world effect. So here's what we're going to do, and you got to kind of stick with me. We're going to go open and close parenthesis. We're going to say this comp with a capital C. So this composition dot layer, we're looking for a layer in this composition and here another open and close parenthesis. And then in here, open and close quotes, we're going to do the name of the layer. So what layer are we looking for? We're looking, of course, for our null one layer right there. So we're going to just type in null with a capital and null one. Then I'm going to move to the outside of that parenthesis, so that little parenthetical statement there. We're going to say dot position. So within the position parameter, position parameter, we're looking for uh, whatever's in the, the, the first position, which is zero. So there's going to be zero and one, which is going to be our X position and our Y position. And if it's a 3D object, you'll also have uh, position number two, which is actually the third position because counting starts with zero. Um, and that'll be your Z axis. We're not messing around with that. So we're going to go position zero. And then we're going to move uh, ne right next to position zero. And we're going to say minus and then another open and close parenthesis. We're going to say this comp. And what do we want to do with this comp? we want to determine the width of this composition divided by two. And then we're going to go outside of this and we're going to divide this entire expression that we just wrote or this entire line by this comp dot width one more time. And when I click away, we have no mistakes, no errors. And as I cycle through this, just watch the number here that's associated with position X. You can see number one, it's starting to move as it is. So it's just moving straight across. It's not doing any up and down movements. And that's because the X axis is side to side. Y axis is up and down. So if we now link this up with the Y axis here under position Y, if we do that, not only will it move side to side properly, but it will also at the same time move up and down. So let's do that. Alter option, click on the stopwatch for position Y. By the way, you could do it right down here uh, for this position Y. They're the same position Y. And we're going to write a very similar expression. So we're going to go open and close parenthesis. We're going to say this comp dot layer, open and close parenthesis, open and close quotes, null 01. We're still looking for that layer. We're going to say dot 
position. I keep spelling position incorrectly because I'm dumb. Open and close square brackets. Now, this time we're not looking for what's in the zero position. We're looking for whatever's over here in position number one. So we're going to put a one in here instead. Ignore this. This is just After Effects not rendering correctly. I'm going to move just outside of my little angle bracket. I'm going to say minus, open and close parenthesis, this, comp, again with a capital C. Now, this time, instead of width, we're going to say dot height divided by two. And then we're going to go outside of this whole thing. And once more, we're going to divide this by this comp dot width. And that should be good to go. All right, so there you go. After Effects correctly rendered uh, and fixed the way that we're looking at it. So now we should have both our position X and position Y moving at the same time. And you can see we're now going to have this crazy effect that's just shooting across the screen looking really interesting. And the key is now going to be... Now that I made particle, the, the bit of text disappear back there. The key is going to be that we make the text appear underneath this crazy bit of, you know, wacky stuff that's going on here. And we may have to go in and change the particles a little bit, make them cover it up a little bit more, or make this happen a little bit faster. Whatever it is, we can, we can do all sorts of adjustments. It's very, very highly editable. Before we adjust speed and everything like that, let's work on animating our text in and making it look right. Uh, so what we'll do is first find what's called a linear wipe. So let's go linear wipe, and you can see there's animation presets right there. There's a pre-built linear wipe animation. We're going to drag it right onto our part particle layer. Now what's happening here, I'm going to twirl this down. It places the first keyframe right where the playhead was, so I'll probably need to move this and adjust it. So I'll twirl down effects, twirl down linear wipe. There's the transition completion, and this is where the animation's happening. Um, I, I definitely want to move the beginning point back a little bit because we want our text to begin appearing sort of as if it's trailing out of the backside of our wipe. And I actually kind of line that up pretty close to perfect. I'm going to nudge this back a little bit, this final, oh, maybe I'll stretch the final keyframe out a little bit. There we go, something like that. Let's see here, it's following, it's following a little too far behind. So I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit more. Let's try, oh, no, let me crunch it in. So I'm just making it start a little bit later and therefore hopefully being a little bit closer to our uh, particles. Let me try dragging this back. It's just, it's a labor of love with some of these transitions. There we go. And it's going to drag through and look pretty, pretty close to the way we want it to look. Now, part of this is also going to be, we're going to have to go in and tweak and adjust it here because we're going to do something else. This is just to establish the basic timing of how everything's working. I'm going to collapse effects. I'm just, I can still see the dots for the keyframes and I want to keep my eye on that because I want to twirl down text. I want to here in the little animation menu, click the little arrow and I want to say, look, I want to animate the tracking. So we're going to go, yep, animate the tracking and uh, we're going to animate the tracking amount. So what we'll do is we're going to start back here where our first keyframe is. We're going to tick on tracking amount and we're going to stretch this out quite a bit. So maybe we'll go, I don't know, we'll try like 35. Let's see how far that stretches it. Eh, you know, maybe we'll take it to 40. 40, something like that. So that's stretching it out quite a bit. And we can see here now as the text unveils, the text uh, the text that we just created, is it's just stretched out a bit. You can see as we stretch this, it just increases the amount of space between our letters. I'm going to undo that because back here or somewhere around here, when the text finally finishes appearing right around here, I want this to snap back to its original position. So here I'm going to set the tracking amount to zero and After Effects is going to automatically place my keyframe. And I'm going to hit the little go to previous keyframe button here. And I may expand the tracking to like 55. I want to make it a little bit more extreme. And as I move through this, we can see that the letters are now moving just side to side a little bit as they move into place. Kind of cool. So now what we'll do is... In addition to this, I'll just select both these keyframes by shift clicking them and then I'll right click and choose keyframe assistant and choose to easy ease them just to give it a little bit of pop and pop and wiggle there. Collapse the text. We're going to open up effects once more. We're going to check to make sure that we're still lined up about right, right? So that looks looks pretty good. One thing I do want to do is change the feather amount. So I want to really feather the edge of this. And what that's going to do is it's going to just help blend. I don't know if you can sort of see what's happening like with the with the P, how it's very faded as it as it washes into place. I kind of like the way that looks. It just makes it look like it's coming out of nothing a little bit more, makes it a little bit smoother, and work with our effect just a little bit more. So let's do a couple little things here. We're going to change the color of the text. We're going to add a quick background and wrap this effect up. I am going to pop out to my finder, and I'm going to drag this background texture video in. Now it's covering everything up. I'm going to drag it beneath everything because I want it to be a background. And I'm going to hit Command-Option-F. That's Control-Alt-F on the PC. That's going to zoom it or transform it to the size 
size of your composition. I'm going to hit the letter T, which is going to bring up my opacity selector, and I'm going to reduce the opacity to 10%. And then over here in my effects and presets panel, I'm going to search for something called a blue wash. And you can see there is this colorized blue wash preset. We're going to drag it and drop it on that video backdrop. It's going to just give us a very subtle, deep, desaturated bluish effect. It's really nice. There we go, that's good. I'm gonna collapse that background layer. I'm gonna select my particles text effect and we are going to add a gradient to this text just to help blend things a little bit. So over here in effects and presets, I'm gonna search for gradients. I wanna choose the gradient ramp right here and I'm gonna drag and drop it on my text layer. You can see we've got a very subtle gray to slightly lighter gray gradient happening. Maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I wanna match this purpley color uh, for my text. So what I'll do is the top color of the text, I'm going to make that the purpley color. And if I recall correctly, that's 5D00F1. There we go. You can see there we go with the pur purpley color there. And this here is the X position and of this gradient stop up here. So moving side to side, we don't need to mess around with that. The second number is the Y position. So if we increase that, we push that purple color down and get more of the true purple color. I think I can back it off a little bit. About 145 looks good for me. Now the bottom color, I want it to match my background a little bit. So I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to try to sample the background. What it's going to do is you can see it's not really selecting the actual true color. It's selecting something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the black and we're going to choose a very, very dark. You know, what? We're, let's let's do something different here. Let's make it solid black. I just thought of something. Let's go solid black. And here, let's drag the Y positioning. Now we're messing with the, uh, the gradient stop here at the bottom of our composition. Let's move that upward by reducing this number. Let's move it all the way up until the bottom of our text is solid black. Now you can see what this is doing. It's making the top of our text very hard to see. So we'll come back up here to the start of the ramp and bring this purple down, 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 down. And what I'm looking to do is basically bring this down to the point where the bottom of the text is just really, really dark. All right. So something like that. And this purple may be a little bit too saturated for my taste. I think I want to just desaturate it a bit, maybe darken it a little bit more, something kind of kind of sort of like that. And I'll hit OK. And then what I want to do here is for my text layer, I want to use a blend mode. Now, if you're not seeing the blend mode, you can hit this toggle switches modes button. And I'm going to set this to the blend mode of screen. And what this is going to do is just drop away the really, really dark parts of the text. You can almost see we can sort of see the background through our text now. So let's see what this looks like here if we play through it. And there we have the particles. And just like that, the text appears looking fine. Maybe I don't quite like the desaturated purpley color as much as I thought, uh, but it's easy to go in and change that. You can always just bring it in a little bit, bring it up a little bit, something like that, and play through it and see exactly what you're getting as you blast through with your new particle text reveal animation. And there you have it. We created that effect and it's ready to be exported and shared or placed into a video or whatever you want to do with it. It's really that easy. A few effects, you can see a few little changes here and there in After Effects and we are good to go. So for messing around with some expressions and some After Effects effects and timeline animating, easing and everything else we covered in this very easy tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.